We are now officially six months away from the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker by director J.J. Abrams that will end the sequel trilogy and the Skywalker saga itself. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. So the great thing about episode 9 is that we do know that this movie is not only going to introduce a lot of new aspects to the Star Wars franchise that we the fans have never seen before on the big screen before, but it's also going to be a film that's not only going to be used as a sequel to The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, but treated as a sequel to the past 8 Star Wars movies that come before this one. Now what's really great about episode 9 is that these past couple of weeks or so we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for episode 9 involving Kylo Ren, the new villain slash Darth Sidious. Now specifically, shot descriptions consisting of Kylo Ren wielding his ignited lightsaber where it's described that he is blocking a strike of force lightning by the new villain, dubbed as the Dark Acolyte who holds a connection to Darth Sidious and claims to be Palpatine himself after his spirit takes over his mind. Palpatine's force lightning is described to have a different sound than it did in the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, where while Palpatine does this for a split second every so often, the lightning turns red then back to blue. The next goes over Kylo directing the strike of lightning back at Palpatine's position, which causes a small explosion causing the Acolyte, who is controlled by Sidious, to become distracted. It said that this is when Kylo uses the force repulse technique that creates a large shockwave against him, causing him to fall down, where Kylo jumps in mid-air and attempts to strike his saber through the Acolyte's abdomen, where the Acolyte is able to force push Kylo out of the way. The next describes a moment in which the Acolyte Force pulls Kylo to his position, where the Acolyte is now holding Kylo Ren by the throat, where he gives him a lecture about the nature of the dark side and the origins of it all. Kylo is able to eventually break free where he is able to use the Force to ambush the Acolyte with pieces of wreckage flying into him, which eventually transitions to a fast-paced saber duel that holds many prequel trilogy choreography. So let's go over a couple of parts about this because we do know that the third act of the episode 9 film is really going to be a very action packed sequence be between of course both Kylo, Rey, the new villain slash Sidious. So I don't know if you guys have been following but what's really intriguing about episode 9 is that we do know that the spirit of Sidious is going to play a major role in this movie and that it is in fact affiliated with the new villain also known as the Dark Acolyte slash Vance. So let's go over Force Lightning. So we haven't seen the use of Force Lightning since the very beginning of The Last Jedi. And even at that, it really wasn't the real type of Force Lightning where it's constantly coming out of the user's fingers, right? So technically, the last time that we really saw Force Lightning was over 10 years ago with, of course, Revenge of the Sith in 2005. So... Of course, now that sounds very intriguing because Palpatine will be using that iconic dark side attack once again against Kylo Ren, except what's really exciting is that it said that every so often for a split second, the lightning turns from blue to red. Now you guys may, may very well know that in Star Wars Legends, there were characters that were able to use red force lightning, and it seems like that J.J. Abrams is tapping into that a little bit for this sequence where he's using it against Kylo Ren, and Kylo is literally blocking this attack by use of his cross-guard lightsaber. Somewhat reminds me of what we saw between both Palpatine and Mace Windu. It's almost like a little parallel to that moment where Mace is able to literally just block the lightning back at Palpatine. Now, what's really exciting about this, though, is that this is a moment in which we have a sequence in where Kylo somewhat somewhat gets the upper hand against Palpatine slash the Dark Acolyte, where he's able to direct the lightning back at his position, causing a very small explosion. Now, this could very well explain as to why we heard about one of the big explosions happening over at Pinewood and Cardington between both Adam Driver and Ian McDermott for a scene in the very ending of Episode 9, and most likely is going to be this. So, this all leads to a sequence in which Palpatine has Kylo by the throat, and he's teaching him a lesson about the nature of the dark side and the origins of it all, since Palpatine's rebirth has something to do with the beyond. Now, we've been learning more and more about the beyond lately, and I gotta tell you guys, it's gonna be a very interesting thing to see and learn about in this movie, and the true potential of this place in the galaxy, since it is the center of the dark side itself, where it all began. 
Now, the last piece that I do want to actually jump into is how it's going to lead to a moment in which a lot of prequel trilogy choreography will be used between both Kylo and Palpatine slash the new Acolyte. Now, think about the prequel trilogy choreography like, let's say for example, Palpatine going up against Yoda, or Anakin going up against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Imagine something like that. Now, that's exactly what they plan to do between both Kylo Ren and Darth Sidious slash the Dark Acolyte. Gonna be very interesting, guys. I cannot wait to see how it all rolls out onto the big screen. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.